Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode, can't remember, of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm fucking coming at you, coming at you on time, all right? On time as fuck, mind you. On So on time that I'm actually today recording this on a fucking Monday, right? So I only just put out the last Spearhead Sundays that was mostly just me yelling about how shit the warehouse is. And if you want to know why I'm recording it so early, you, oh, Lewis, you've turned over a new leaf. You're so much more organized. Cunt, no, right? It's not because I'm so much more organized. It's because today is a public holiday, so there's nobody else here so I can scream. And, and that's the only reason why I'm doing it. I don't want to be doing it now, right? I'm probably going to be talking about shit that's, that's no longer relevant. I might be dead from coronavirus come Sunday, in which case this uh, podcast will probably get a lot of views. Um, so if, you, if, if I have died from coronavirus, please do uh, buy tickets to my Melbourne International Comedy Festival show anyway to support the costs for mum to pay for my funeral. That'd be really nice. Loosebeers.com slash gigs. Obviously, I've died, so I won't be performing. If, you know, in the extremely unlikely slim chance situation where I have not died, from coronavirus, uh, I will be performing still at the uh, Melbourne International Comedy Festival uh, and you can still get tickets at loosebeers.com slash gigs and I will actually be there and none of the money will be going towards my funeral or anybody else's. but, however, I will I will be meeting everybody after the show. However, I will be wearing a full hazmat suit. And uh, as uh, as you come in to the meet and greet, instead of what I normally do, me going, hey, thanks for coming and shaking your hand, taking a photo, I will instead uh, pull out a spray bottle full of disinfectant and spray it into your eyes and your hands and tell you to wash them and then say, go away, infected peasant. Uh, and that's uh, what I'll be doing. Um, so loosebeers.com slash gigs if you'd like to uh, see me perform in a full hazmat suit and then get sprayed in the eyes with disinfectant. Obviously, that's not what actually happens. I will be telling some fucking jokes. Um, but, uh, you know, you never know. Maybe you'll be wearing a hazmat suit. Who knows where we'll be in fucking April? You know what I mean? 27th of March is my first date. It's less than two weeks away. So get your fucking tickets. They're going quick. All right. Now, what did I want to talk about here? Well, we're fucking on it, aren't we? Oh, you know what? We'll come back to it. Right. So... It's time to address a controversy, and it's time to, to tell you guys something very important, right? Uh, I need to address this controversy uh, that's been absolutely all over my social media, and that is a photograph that I posted of myself wearing no shirt. Now, whenever I post a photo of me without a shirt on, which is hardly ever, maybe once every two or three months, I'll be like, you know what? I had a great time in in this photo I had a great time with my shirt off and I'm just going to take a photo of me living in the moment because I very rarely post a photo of me with my shirt off to be like oh look at my fucking muscles it's always coincidentally now as I say that I'm going to have to scroll through my fucking Instagram profile to make sure that I'm not a liar because often I say things on this show and then I get a hundred comments going um actually hey actually fuck you all right I'm pretty sure that I'm correct I did like three scrolls and I didn't see any other shirtless fucking photos so This is the last one that I've done. And this is the most... This photo of me with my shirt off is the most controversial thing I've ever done in my fucking life. And I have done a lot of things, right? I've joked about tragedies the day they've happened. I've crashed conferences full of uh, uh, people who are solidly... uh, solidly agreeing with themselves and not me, right? I've done a lot of things that are so worthy of a controversy that get overlooked, right? Dude, I remember when I put it that Dreamworld joke, I for sure thought I was going to hit headlines with that, man. No one gave a fuck. But the minute I post a photo of me with my shirt off, the whole world goes crazy. I feel like Heath Ledger. Everyone loses their minds, right? (laughs) Everyone's fucking yelling at me, and I've worked out why, because... You know why this this photo of me with my shirt off is such a contentious photo and why it has everybody fucking angry? I've worked it out. It's, and it's because nobody can decide whether I am jacked and muscular or malnourished and underweight, right? Everyone's arguing about whether I look great or whether I look like I just escaped a prison camp. Those are the only two opinions that I'm having here, right? You look at the comments section, it's pretty 50-50, right? So we have one person uh, saying, you look really hot. Uh, Another person saying, are those legs? (laughs) 
Uh, what else do we have here? I want to look at uh, um, the recent ones. Um, so we have... Um, dude, you're actually really ripped. I'm surprised. Well done. And then we have another comment that says... Uh, where are we? Trying to find another one. Oh, I can't find any fucking negative comments. Uh, <laughs> all right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Facebook because they were much meaner to me on Facebook. All right, here we go, right? we got one person that says, wow, you actually look really ripped. I'm impressed. And then another person who says, with all the respect I can muster, you look like a fucking toothpick, uh, which is very mean, uh, but also can't really dispute it top comment what the fuck nebs is a little bit shredded um and then yeah just ah, oh, this is probably the best uh comment right this is the most accurate comment i think you strangely look both muscular and anorexic at the same time. And that's really what it comes down to. Everyone is arguing. Every single person on the internet who saw that photo is arguing and angry uh, because they can't work out whether I'm muscular or malnourished. Guys, I'm here to settle the debate. I'm here to fucking stamp this out right now, once and for all. The answer to the question is, Am I malnourished or am I muscular? The answer is both. I am six foot eight. I cannot look like I'm fucking a regular person without eating like 8,000 calories a day, which obviously I don't even have the fuck the time. I can't afford to eat that much food. You know, I looked at like a, a, like a body weight thing of if I wanted to fucking look like, if I really wanted to look like a big person, I would have to put on, like, 25 kilos. And for me, at that height and that weight, I would actually have to eat about 5,000 calories a day just to maintain that. Guys, I can't be fucked, and I can't afford to eat that much food. No way. It takes me, at this current point, 2,000 calories just to stay, like upright. If I don't eat 2,000 calories every single fucking day, which is what most people eat to put on weight, and that's what I eat to, to look like I'm underweight. If I don't eat 2,000 calories every day, sometimes I'll get out of bed and I might faint, you know, like halfway from standing up. It takes me about 10 minutes to stand up out of bed, right? So when I get five minutes into the stand up, I might faint and hit my head on the fucking floor. So what I'm saying is, guys, right? I'm both. Yeah. You know, like, uh, you know what I, I look like? I look like uh, like Brad Pitt in Fight Club. Now, I'm not saying anything to do with the incredibly handsome head. I'm saying look at his fucking body. Now, if, if that photo of him in Fight Club with his shirt off, right? If you took away all of the makeup, if you took away all of the lighting, and you put him next to me, the only difference would be height. It's an incredibly skinny, but also, fuck, that dude's got a six pack. That's the that's my look. That's what I'm rocking, right? Like in a t-shirt, fuck, that guy looks underweight. Take the shirt off. Oh, he's kind of jacked. No, he's not. What's going on? And that's me. And I'm trying to fix that, right? I'm going to gym every day, starting <laughs> this morning. <laughs> and I haven't been going every day, but I've been going pretty consistently. Before I took that photo, and then I took the photo, and I was like, you know what? I'm making a bit of comp. I'm making a bit of fucking progress here because the last time I posted a fucking shirtless photo, there weren't any positive comments at all. There was no dispute. It was a hundred percent. Oh, that guy looks malnourished as fuck, and I agreed, right? But now I'm sitting in the fucking. I'm in limbo, right? I'm not. I'm. I'm neither dead nor alive. I'm stuck in purgatory. Am I skinny? Am I Jack? Nobody knows. I'm stuck in the middle. You know what I am? I'm like those. Uh, I'm, I'm like those really fat guys that like they were fucking super obese and then they lost 50 kilos and that's amazing. But at the end of the day, they're still fat as fuck, you know, like that's, that's where I'm at. I, it's a great improvement, but I'm not there, you know. I'm fucking, I'm still sitting there going, dude, I'm proud of myself, but whenever a stranger sees me, all they see is a fat cunt. I've lost 50 kilos. Cool, man. You look like you eat 10 burgers. For breakfast. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, I do. I look like I eat no burgers ever or breakfast. But 
I've got a little bit of muscle on me. And that's that's what it's all about, guys. It's all about self improvement as slow as 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 slow as possible. I'm trying to get there, but it's very difficult. You know what it is? It's because I have uh, even though I have very little muscle mass, I have zero fat. I just have none. Like any fat that I have gets fucking dissipated across my entire body and you can't see it at all. So whenever I make even a minuscule muscle gain, it is the most obvious shit in the world. That's my seek that's my superpower, bro. I'm both. I'm malnourished and kind of jacked. And that's where we're at. We're both. We're living in both worlds, my friends. Welcome to the fucking party. You know what it is? It's the opposite. Oh, that's what I am, dude. I'm like the opposite of a fucking strongman. You know how you see the Olympic strongmen, the heavyweight athletes? They're the strongest, fittest people in the world, but they look like fat cunts. Like if you saw that guy, like if you, you see him at the Olympics and he like throws 700 kilos over his head and into space and you're like, fuck, that guy's so strong. But if you saw him, right, just walking down the street, you'd be like, that guy needs to go on a diet. He's unhealthy as fuck. That's, that, I'm the opposite, right? A- and I'm not strong or an athlete. <laughs> and I'll never be in the Olympics. It's like, I don't look very healthy at all, but I'm kind of strong. I'm not strong at all. I don't know, guys. I'm working on it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here to say. I'm fucking working on it. And also, body shaming works. All those comments really kick me in the gear. You, you know what you need? You need the perfect amount of bullying and a little bit of, you can do it though. That's what you need. If everyone is bullying you and there's no positivity in your life, it's not going to work. But if you have a few people bullying you and a few people saying, you can do it, that's all you need. That's the perfect mix, man, because then you're motivated by the people who believe in you and you want to prove all these cunts wrong. That's what I'm all about. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I have the fucking, the analytics to prove, right? that I might be malnourished and jacked, right? I might be both of those things, and a lot of people might be saying, oh, you look terrible, put a shirt on. Guys, I'm sorry, but I look fucking great. And you know how I know that? Most liked photo for the last 18 months. Can't dispute facts, ladies and gentlemen. Looking malnourished and jacked is a fucking vibe, and the ladies love it. Most of those comments, from girls. Most of those likes, rather, right? Not many girls commented, they don't want to look too thirsty, and that's how women operate, and that's fine, I understand that, right? So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, no matter what your opinion is, the survey says, you are wrong. I look fucking great, and I look forward to posting more shirtless photos on my Instagram just to make you cunts angry. I'm actually not going to do that. You know what I'll do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go hard for six months, and then I'll post one. And then it's over for you hoes. Bro, one, bro one, once I put on once I put on one kilo, it's over for you hoes. I'm slowly, I'm edging out that that malnourished thing. I'm getting out of this. I'm breaking my way, to, way out of the internment camp, you know? You know what I oh, you know what I look like? I don't look like I've been in a in a like in Auschwitz, right? Where they just kept you there and didn't feed you. I look like I am my first month in to a hard labor death camp, you know, like my first month in. So I'm working real hard every day, but I'm not being fed properly. So you would have a transition period where I feel like anyone going into like a a hard labor camp, a hard labor death camp, there would be a period after like two weeks where you would just be in the best shape of your life. If you're in a hard labor death camp, two weeks in, you're in the best shape you've ever been in. Six weeks in, you're probably going to die. But that two-week period, you look great, right? Obviously, you're not being fed properly at all. So you've been working out every day, right? Doing hard workouts every single day, waking up early in the morning, smashing rocks or building a train line, whatever you're doing, working out every single day doing a lot of cardio, a lot of heavy lifting. And also because of your diet, you're on keto, right? No carbs, not much of anything. You know, your keto, intermittent fasting. That's a, I mean, that's that's a healthy lifestyle for, for the first two weeks. You'll turn into a fucking Olympian. And I mean, six weeks in, you're dead. But those first two weeks, 
I bet there was a lot of fucking going on. Everyone would be hot. You know, they, they'd welcome in new prisoners and they would be really sad about being there, but there'd be someone on their third week, you know, they're starting to lose all of the muscle, right? And they'd be like, man, don't worry. The first two weeks, not that bad. It's actually like the best workout you'll ever have in your life. You're going to look amazing. And then like, oh, what happens after that? They go, oh, you start to die slowly and it's very painful and terrible. But, but the first two weeks, bro, you're going to look so good. You're going to look great. I mean, they don't let you have mirrors because we could turn them into weapons, but other people will go, bro, you in your first two weeks? And they go, yeah, man, I look fucking great. They're like, dude, that's awesome. And then they pass out and die. Because <laughs> you would. You would lose all your fat, right? You'd be keto. You'd be intermittent fasting. You'd be fucking jacked. That's what, that's what I'm on. I'm on, that, I'm on that hard labor death camp diet. I'm working hard, but I'm not eating enough. <laughs> so I look great, and I'm going to die in six weeks. All right, I'm going to move on, guys. How long are we going here for? Uh, it doesn't fucking say. I've got to check the thing. 16 minutes. All right, guys. We got 16 minutes out of that one fucking photo. Um, what else do I want to talk about here? Um, all right. Okay, this is very important, and it's time for someone to say this, Okay. What I'm about to say is going to blow a lot of people's minds. It's going to shatter a lot of women's dreams, okay? This is, ladies, this is for you, all right? And someone has to say it. You guys have had your fun. You've gone far enough, and the truth needs to be said. Ladies, I'm just being honest. You might not be ready to hear this, but it's the truth. Ladies, posting other people's TikToks on your Instagram story doesn't mean that you are funny. Sorry, that's not what being funny is, ladies. Posting other people's work on your Instagram story, even if it relates to you, doesn't make you funny. You know what that makes you? A content thief. Posting other people's TikToks on your Instagram story isn't a personality or a hobby, a skill or a sense of humor, ladies. I'm sorry. I know that you think that when someone responds to the, your story that you posted of somebody else's fucking TikTok and they say, lol, that doesn't mean that you're funny. That means the TikTok is funny and the person who made that is funny. Not you. I'm sorry. It's just not you. You have a sense of humor because you can appreciate funny things and identify when something's funny. But when you put it on your story, that doesn't mean you're funny. That means that you're posting someone else's joke. My fucking, I hate watching Instagram stories now because whenever a girl comes up, there is a 70% chance that when I open up their Instagram story, I'm not going to see what they've been doing that day, right? I'm not going to see them at a music concert or them at a fucking cafe filming their meal instead of eating it for some reason. If I open up a girl's Instagram story, there is now a 70% chance that it's not going to be her. It's just going to be someone else's TikTok about being bisexual. And I've had enough. <laughs> I don't care how relatable it is, ladies. Get those bisexual TikToks out of your story feed. I'm over it. Either eat some pussy or get off TikTok. So many bisexual girls who have never dated a woman just going, oh my God, this is so me. It's like, no, it's not you, okay? That is some other woman who actually eats pussy and you don't have the balls. I bet real lesbians are watching all these bisexual girls who kiss girls at parties posting bi TikToks on their fucking Instagram feed going, this is so me. They're going, you know what? Grow a dick and eat some pussy, you coward. That's a real thing about lesbians not liking bisexual women because they always date men. It's like this big feud going on in the LGBT movement where all of the L, Gs and Ts want to kick, kick the Bs out because they're non-committal. Ah, you just come and go into our movement, don't you? Get out of here. I'm sorry, ladies. I had to say it. It's very important. Such an important PSA. Posting someone else's TikTok on your story 
doesn't mean you're funny. Someone had to say it. And I'm sorry that it came from me. But I'm only saying it because I love you. I never thought I would miss the days of opening up some chick's story and just seeing 35,000 Snapchats of her at Coldplay or some shit band of them just screaming the words to Lady Gaga and you can't hear them or Lady Gaga or see anything. I paid $100 to be here. I'm going to film it instead of watch it. Oh, fuck. I miss those days. People getting a fucking milkshake that has fairy floss on the top and a, and a fucking donut for some reason. Just filming, like, just like, just uh, like, I, all I want to see now is like some idiot who paid $18 for a fucking milkshake because it looks good on Insta. That's what I want to see. I miss those days, man. I miss those days of fucking seeing chicks posting video of them at nightclubs, you know, pretending to have fun while they actually just get sexually harassed by a bunch of drunk men. I miss those days. I used to, I hated them, but dude, you know, hindsight's a bitch, man. Bring them, bring them back. I'm sick of seeing fucking TikToks that that my friends did not make. I want to see my friends. I don't want to see fucking some American chick with a nose ring talk about flirting with another girl. I'm over these bisexual TikToks, man. I've had enough. <laughs> we need to put an embargo. I'll at least get rid of the bisexual ones. I've seen them. I've, I've seen all the jokes. Oh, when I look at a, a guy wearing... Regular clothes, he looks stupid, but when I see a girl wearing that same outfit, she looks good. I reckon I've seen 17 different versions of that. Maybe I just have too many bisexual friends. Maybe that's on me. Maybe I should be, um, maybe I should turn into like a big radical conservative and burn all my bridges. That'd be good. You know, get cancelled by the community. Um, this guy doesn't agree with me on everything that I think. So he's cancelled. I'm sorry, everyone. I love those stories. I love following um, people that are so in that social justice world. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, fuck, social justice warriors. Because, you know, I think there's some merit to it all. But I love, I love watching people that are heavy, especially Melbourne. I'm from Melbourne, so there's a lot of people in my life, especially people younger than me that are in like, that fucking left-wing uh, social justice circles. And they're not necessarily a fighter, but they're like an ally, you know? So they keep up with the issues and they think whatever their friends think and they're always sharing like PSAs and language tips and you can wear this and you can't wear that. And I love watching it because it always inevitably leads to infighting. And I get off on that shit. There is nothing better than watching an ideology eat itself away from the inside. It's like, uh, it, it would be like if the Nazis found out that Hitler was Jewish, you know? Like, that's what it is. Like, oh, we need to get rid of these people. But that's me. Oh, fuck. What do we do? And then it just splits into 37 different factions, right? Except instead of, you know, exterminating races, they're just canceling cunts on Twitter. And no one, no one has like a swastika armband. Everyone just has a blue check. <laughs> I always see that shit or just like male feminists pretending to be feminists to get pussy and they turn into evil people like Harvey Weinstein was the biggest male feminist of all time we forget that that dude like if you go back and I, I believe it was 2010 2008 there is like a bunch of really powerful women accepting Oscars or awards for their acting. And there are so many examples of women thanking Harvey Weinstein for being like a, like a fighter for women in film and, and like holding women up and helping women succeed and being an ally. And he was like the biggest fucking monster of all time. Isn't that fucking nuts? Dude, that guy's going to die in prison, huh? My favorite thing about that Harvey Weinstein shit was uh, for, for what was it? Six months? Maybe, maybe less. But like in my head, six months, he was walking into the court battles on a fucking walking frame. 
Like, this dude's one of the richest guys in the world, and he's walking into court with the world's shittest walking frame that has fucking tennis balls on the legs. Like, the most transparent, oh, you can't, I can't rape anyone, I use a walking frame. The most transparent shit ever, right? Dude, whenever I say the word transparent, all I can think of is like, I just in my head, I just imagine two parents of a trans kid. You know, trans parents. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I say transparent, that's all I see in my head. Transparent. Or, or like, a, or, you know, Caitlyn Jenner. That's a really good example of a transparent. Anyway, I'm getting off track. I love that Harvey Weinstein spent six months on a walking frame with fucking tennis balls underneath it during his court cases and the fucking minute he was found guilty the minute he lost the case you know how they dragged him out in handcuffs no walker hands behind his back standing up straight walking unassisted out of the courthouse down the steps into a police car totally fine like not even pretending to keep up the act he's like oh well that didn't work fuck it throws the walker across the room probably tries to chicks hit some chick Dubbed him in. I didn't realize this, um, but Bill Cosby, who's in prison at the moment, I believe, for the same shit. Well, similar shit. Bill was probably worse drugging women. I feel like that's worse than what Harvey did, even though what Harvey did is evil. Uh, But Bill Cosby has maintained his innocence the whole time. And there's a lot of people that believe... I think there are a lot more people that believe Bill Cosby is innocent than they do Harvey. I think everyone's like across the board, like, oh yeah, Harvey's definitely guilty. Definitely did that shit. But there is a big community of people out there who think that Bill Cosby is innocent. So he's got a bit of a chance at being proven innocent, right? So he's still fighting. And uh, I, I think that he absolutely fucked his chances the other day when Harvey Weinstein was found guilty Bill Cosby released a statement through his publicist saying that Harvey Weinstein was innocent. Dude, even if you do believe that, don't say it. That's not going to help you. If you're if you've been convicted of multiple rapes, don't stand up for the only other guy also convicted of like 20 rapes. Don't do that shit. That doesn't make you look good. That just makes you look like you guys were friends swapping methods on WhatsApp or whatever encrypted service rapists use. Oh, hey, Bill, how do you get him? Why are you roll hip now? Oh, I can't do a Bill Cosby accent. That was fucking embarrassing. I know that if I started trying to do a Bill Cosby accent, it would just come out like as a racist Asian caricature. <laughs> I, that, I, I, I started doing it I immediately saw it going there I'm like dude that's gonna turn into Ching Cosby real quick <laughs> I think that's crazy bro you know what that's like that's like fucking uh, yeah, when Martin Bryant that guy who, who did like a giant mass shooting in Tasmania that's like if Martin when Martin Bryant got convicted Ivan Milat the dude who killed all these backpackers were like I reckon he's innocent this is a campaign against all serial murderers it's all it's organized and they're trying to take us down it's like come on Ivan that doesn't make you look like a better person Bill Cosby should be standing up for people who probably didn't do it like if you're going to stand up for wrongly convicted people don't stand up for the rapes you know like stand up for the maybe the murderers you know maybe some robberies Maybe stand up for some like some uh, fraud. Don't stand up for the guy who almost definitely raped all those chicks. Doesn't make you look good. It's just not even even if true, not the best strat. You know what I mean? You could you could do better. Kim Kardashian's out there getting people pardoned. Why don't you try some of that? Huh? <laughs> okay. Right, might be time for a bit of uh, miscellaneous bit at the end here. I've got to check the time. Um, oh, not yet. i got one more thing. I, let me know about uh, the sound, by the way, because I think the sound of this episode should be better um, because I'm using different gear. Uh, but if there are any sound issues on this podcast, because there were a, a lot of people complaining about background noise and hiss last episode, uh, I think the thing that I was using, I've used it to death and uh, it's time to give it up. So... 
Uh, let me know what you guys think of the fucking sound of this episode. Um, I, I got one more thing, and then we'll do miscellaneous bit at the end. Um, I just started getting into uh, Ozzy Osbourne's music, and I feel like a like a fucking idiot. I had no idea that he was this good. I started getting into Ozzy. Uh, <laughs> this is how naive I was about Ozzy Osbourne, right? This is the most. This is I, the dumbest I've ever felt. Oh, Keelan's bloody set the alarm off. Oh, no. That's all good. I think you need to set the alarm or make it red-green and then you can get out. Guys, please support me on Patreon. This sucks. We need to get out of here. It's no good. Um, and you get early access to everything that I do and cheaper tickets and all that kind of stuff. There's a bunch of rewards. Go and check it out, right? So, Ozzy Osbourne. I started listening to his music. Now, here's... Me, before I started listening to his shit, this is what I knew about him. I thought, I'm so dumb. I thought that Ozzy Osbourne was just a weird guy with a reality show. I knew that he'd done rock stuff, but I assumed he was like um, like one of those washed up rock stars that like, like the, the guys that came in after ACDC and Led Zeppelin. Do, do you know what I mean? Like the guys that, that when Led Zeppelin were at their peak, they were sitting at a solid seven, and that's as, excess, as as successful as they got. Like, they never made it to Motorhead, you know? They never made it to fucking Rolling Stone level. They were like the, 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 you know, there was the Beatles, and then there's the Monkees. You know, that's what I'm thinking about. So I thought that Ozzy was just a rock guy from a band. I didn't realize that I had no idea... That Ozzy Osbourne was in Black Sabbath? I didn't know that. I didn't know any of Black... I didn't know that Black Sabbath was a, was a big band at all until I listened to, like, one of their albums and I knew, like, five songs. Because here's my problem. When I was younger, I started getting into metal a little bit. I started listening to Metallica. I fucking loved it. And then I listened to a bit of Sabaton. I fucking loved it. And then my little brother loved it. And then he moved into uh, Parkway Drive and started getting into Screamo. And I fucking hated that. I respect the, the, the talent that it takes to play all of those instruments. But no matter how many times I've tried it, how many different bands I've listened to, how many things he's sent me, I can't enjoy the screaming. It puts me off. It just sets off something in my brain and I've decided it doesn't matter how many different artists I listen to from that genre, that genre, not for me. I can't enjoy that genre at all. And that turned me off metal entirely. And I stopped listening to metal and I started getting into some real classy music uh, and I elevated my taste and I started getting into Australian rap, which as we all know is the best type of music in the world and everyone in the comment section is going to agree with me, right? So I got off metal and I stopped listening to it for like, you know, Maybe almost 10 years, eight years, right? So then this, this is how I found out about Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath. It is the most fucking generic, stupid meme way, right? I listened to Post Malone's new album and Ozzy Osbourne is on it. And I'm like, oh, that's strange that that Ozzy guy is on it. Why is he on it? Is he like a big deal? This is like... You know the that joke that people were throwing around? Like, oh my God, I can't believe uh, Post Malone gave an opportunity to new artist Ozzy Osbourne. That's how I acted, but I wasn't joking. I was fucking serious. Do you know who Ozzy Osbourne is, Keelan? Yes, I know who he is. Before I told you? Yeah, yeah. What band was he in? I'm not sure. I just know him from Austin Powers. Okay, Keelan only knows him from Austin Powers. So we're on the same level. You don't, but do you understand how like influential and important he is to metal? Uh, yeah, a little bit, not really. Not really. Yeah, I think we miss. I think we must have missed that. I so I I started listening to Ozzy because I really liked him on fucking Post Malone's track, and I was like, oh, I got to check out this new guy. He sounds great. I then find out that he's he was the lead singer of Black Sabbath, like one of the most important metal bands ever. Did you know that? Not until recently, right? I think I've told you that at the motorhome. Yeah. I told you that. I told Keelan that. And he was like, oh, really? And then Zach and Luke were like, yeah, you fucking idiot. 
He's like one of the most important metal singers ever. I didn't even know that he didn't play guitar. <laughs> I, did, I, I had no, no idea anything about him, right? So then I start listening to some Black Sabbath. And I'm like, fuck, this is awesome. And then uh, I listened to Ozzy Osbourne's newest album, his solo one, um, Ordinary Man. Fuck, it is incredible. And this guy is 70 years old with Parkinson's. And he, he's made one of the best me metal albums I've ever heard in my fucking life. Go and listen to that shit. It is incredible. Straight to Hell, the first track, is so good. Like, it's so good that I actually remember the name of it. I never remember names of songs or artists, and I remember that shit. So that's fucking good. The whole album is awesome. He did a song with Elton John, and it's just like two 70-year-old rock stars talking about fame and and making it and then and then being old and trying to keep it carry on and then dying. Like so cool. It's whenever I see someone who's 70 years old who reached the absolute pinnacle of success in their creative field and kept doing it, that's so inspiring. That's some Donald Trump shit. You realize, you know? He made it to the top of his field, still going. I have to respect it. Bernie Sanders, what is he, 74, still trying. That's fucking, no matter what you think of the politics, inspirational as fuck. Elton John, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Jerry Lewis, the comedian, was doing it. I don't know the exact age. I think it was like 80-something, and then he, he died, and he was still doing shows. Like, in the months leading up to his death, he was still getting on stage in Vegas and being like, yeah, I'm Jerry Lewis. And a bunch, I, I can only assume his entire audience was as close to death as he was. That's so cool. I, I really do hope that one day I'll be sitting in this fucking chair and I'll just die. Not, not soon. <laughs> Not that. I really, yeah, that's right. I, you know what? I really hope that I just die in this chair now. I hope that one day I get 40 minutes. I'm, I'm like 90, 100 years old. Like our generation, a lot of us are going to see 100. So that's how I hope I go. I hope that I'm fucking 40 minutes into a podcast, like episode 10,000 of the Speared Sundays. I've got dementia. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I can't remember the episode title. Not that that's any different from me. And, and I, and what, I get 40 minutes in. It's probably live streamed. I bet it's virtual reality. Everyone's watching, right? Everyone's watching from their fucking retirement homes. All you, all of you guys, you still support me on Patreon of the Future or whatever the fuck it is, right? And 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 I get 40 minutes into my live streamed virtual reality podcast, and then I just shit my pants and die. And everyone just watches me die real time. The virtual reality is so good. They can probably feel me. They could smell the shit in my pants. And everyone just watches and smells me fucking die while I do the podcast. And that's how I go. That's how I want to go. It's just shitting and podcasting at the same time. That's how I want to go, man. That's how it's going to be. That's incredible. I, I wanted to see Ozzy Osbourne on tour, but he canceled it because he has... Um, just because of his, you know, he's, just because he's old. It's the saddest shit ever. You know what that made me realize, bro? Death comes for us all, huh? No matter, no matter how famous, how, like, amazing you are, people more successful and I, more iconic than Ozzy Osbourne, bro, it doesn't matter. It comes for us all, hey? Like, he, he's 71. He's still doing albums. Elton John is touring Australia currently. They're like in their 70s and they're still doing it, but it's common for us. Like Ozzy had to cancel his tour, right? Not because he had a like a big rock star injury or he had to do another thing that was more important that he make more money from. You know why he canceled his tour? He just fell over at home. Isn't that just the most old man shit ever? Isn't that sad? He's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm Ozzy Osbourne. I'm going to tour the world. And then he just tries to get out of the bath and falls. And he's like, oh, no, I've fallen over and I can't get up because I'm 70. I gotta, and he had to cancel his whole tour, man. And that means that if he doesn't get better, I'll never get to see him. And I will forever remember him as the cunt on Post Malone's album. And I'll never get to see him live because he fell over at home. And that's it, bro comes for us all man do what you want to do in life because at the end of the day you know what at the end of the day we're all falling over at home and do you want to fall over in a retirement home or do you want to fall over onto some nice tiles 
That's that's it. What are you breaking your hip on? You know, stained carpet or tiles? I'm going with tiles, man. I'm shattering my hip on some nice custom tiles. Not the small ones either, the big ones, you know, imported tiles. That's what I want to break my hip on when I come out of the bath, when I'm 80 years old. <laughs> Chase your dreams, my friends, because at the end of the day, we're all getting done by tiles. All right, with that, it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end. Um, I didn't even get to talk about fucking coronavirus. Oh, well, sucked in. Um if you'd like to send uh, an email to the podcast, if you need some life advice, if you have a question, if you just have a funny story, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. Change the names if you want to be anonymous because I will Ron Burgundy shit this shit and read it the fuck out. Don't make me create stuff because uh, I'm saying whatever you read. Um, this one's from James. How do I build up the balls to take the leap and become self-employed? Oh, this is a good question because this is a scary one. I've been through this a few times. Morning. My name is James. I've been a fan for a year now. I love Death Threats Don't Scare Me and Spears vs. America. Thank you. I'll stop sucking your dick now and, oh, what? Give me more compliments. Uh, and I'll get to get to my problem. This is less of a comedic topic, so I understand if... I uh, Just fucking stop padding. Don't say, oh, or you probably won't read it. Can't just send it and I might read it. Fuck. I would love some advice on how to get... I love that people... I love that people think, right... This is less of a comedic topic, so I understand if it won't make it to the show, but I would love some advice. I love that you guys think that if your question doesn't make it on the show, I'm still going to take the time to answer. No, I'm not. If your question doesn't make it to the show, you're fucked. You're on your own, bro. If you don't have an entertaining question, I'm not helping. What do you think I do? Like, uh, like, if, like when I go through my fucking emails, I pick two that I'll answer on the podcast and then I write out 70 life advice email responses. What do you think I do with my day, bro? I don't do that shit. This isn't fucking better help. I'm not sitting here, like, answering your fucking emails. I only answer the ones I read, dude. Anyway, if you really need some advice, fucking ask a friend. Don't email me. Jesus Christ. I mean, email me. I'd love to hear the story. But also ask your friend. Um... I'd love some advice on how to get get out of working unfulfilling jobs and do something that I'm passionate about, uh, like you did. I've been doing some freelance videography gigs here and there on the side of my job. I think I have the skills to do the freelance shit full time, but I don't know how to take the risk of quitting my job, living off savings for a bit, and maybe not being able to eat for a month. How did you finally build up the courage to do comedy full time, and what words of wisdom can a long cunt from the other side of the world give me for when the going gets tough? Um, okay, this one, if you're a videographer, if you film, if you take photos, you are in the best position to make regular money from this shit. Here's how you do it, right? Here's how all of the people that I work with and regularly pay to make content started working with me. When I was a lot smaller, when I was broke as fuck, but I had potential and I was making shit... They messaged me and they just did shit for me for free. So if you're a photographer, if you make stuff, even if it's fucking beats, make shit for free, right? Until, not forever, until. Make shit for free. Reach out to other people. Collaborate, right? Only make shit for free to people that will obviously get you shit in return. Don't make shit for free for some fucking loser who's got no fans and needs to build a little bit, right? Make shit for for me when I was in 2014, 2013, when I was like, when I had 20,000 likes on Facebook, 20,000 fucking followers on YouTube. So I've got a, I've got a very big audience, but I'm making no money. You should work with those people. If you make beats, reach out to rappers with 20K on Instagram. Make beats for free. Send them shit for free. Because if you can get your your fucking name out there and make some really, really good shit, either, right, you do a couple things for free and then you go, all right, you've seen what I can do. The next one I'm going to charge you for. That's what happened with me. Um, I, I was making videos. Uh, 
my fucking designer, Matteo, is a great example of that. This poster behind me, all of the art drawn by him, all of the art except for my first tour poster was has been paid for. My first tour poster, I think I, I paid him, he wanted to do it for free and I gave him 50 bucks and that's all I could afford. And now every single time I fucking tour, he gets a lot more money than that to make me a poster because I remember those days and now he gets work from other people that see his art on my shit and go, dude, who made that? And I go, check him out. He's great. Use him. Uh, a lot of the people that I film with, uh, a guy called Tom, uh, he's currently editing all of the Cooking Without Instructions uh, videos. That's like tw 12 fucking videos. That is weeks of work that I'm paying him using the Patreon money. Thank you very much to create Cooking Without Instructions. He started with me doing shit for free. He reached out. He did shit for... No, he did shit for Elliot Loney for free. And then he did one... I saw that and I was like, fuck, I want to work with that guy. He's great. And he did one for, for me for free. And then I started paying him from there. Because I was like, fuck, this is great. That's how you can fucking make money out of people is just do some shit for free, right? There's a lot of people that are like really averse to working for exposure. And I agree with that to an extent. I, when you're starting out, exposure is all you got. So take as much of it as you can. When you get more established, then you start charging. Um... So that's what I think. So just do as much shit as you can for smaller people to get your name out there and build yourself a brand. So if you're a videographer, fucking brand your shit. If they're doing shit, if you're doing shit for them for free, you make them tag you. And then all of the other rappers will see that. All of the other comedians will see that shit. We pay attention. I, all, all of the other online boys in Australia, we all pay attention to what each other is doing and we all work with talented people that, you know, make shit right? The, the guy who filmed Spears vs. America, he's wor he worked with me and I only worked with him because he did a great job on a fucking a Frenchie video. And he's worked with Isaac and he's worked with Luke and he's worked with all, all of us. And that's how we know he's good because one person took the risk. All of us saw it. We're like, fuck, that guy's good. I want to work with him. Now he does shit for us all the time. Um, so that's how I would, that goes to anyone. Um, and then in terms of quitting your job, uh, I remember when I quit, I started making a little bit of money and I was like, fuck it. I want to be a comedian. I'm out of here. I left the call center job, ran out of money in four months. Wasn't making any more, any, any more money. Had to go back to the job. Felt like the biggest failure of my life thus far. Uh, but then the second time I left... I, yeah, yeah. The second time that I left, it was for a lot longer. It was for eight months. And then the, then I went back for the second time. And the second time, that felt like the biggest failure of my life. The third time I left, I haven't been back. Uh, so a lot of this shit, when you're self-employed, a lot of this shit is, I don't think the first time you leave is, is the last time you leave, if you know what I mean. I think it's a lot of stopping and starting. Uh, when you're trying to build something and when you're trying to make money for yourself, jobs become a tool for money. Money becomes a tool to fuel your operation. If you run out of fuel, you might need to pick that tool up again and fill up and then leave. So any kind of job that you can get and leave, like a call center job is perfect, retail is perfect, cafe is perfect. Any kind of job where there's a lot of come and go and it's a lot easy to get, just go back and forth between those jobs Quit for as long as you can, come back. Uh, quit for as long as you can, come back. As long as you are always working and always hustling, quitting might mean, you know, maybe it's not quitting. Maybe it's dropping down from full-time to part-time. So just work as little as you can while making sure that you can feed yourself and fuel your endeavors. Because if you can only afford food and you're not putting money into your business, you probably need to work a little bit more because you need to make, you need to spend money to make money. So that's my advice is do shit for free, get your name out there, work with other creatives with platforms and do a fucking great job because 
Not only will they want to work with you again and you can charge them for it, maybe the third time you charge, but I guarantee you, no matter what industry, every single one of their peers is going to see it. So if you do a good job and you're good to work with, someone's going to reach out to you and be like, yeah, fuck, that film clip you did for that person is awesome. Or that logo you designed for this person is sweet. The the graphic designer that I used for all of my logos for Death Threats Don't Scare Me and all of my advertising, he now works with my management company making all of the posters for all of the boys, like Isaac, Luke, everyone. So that's how it happens. You just do shit, you get seen, and people pick you up if they because they see talent. All right, that's my advice. I got to end it there because my battery's about to die. Um, thank you very much for watching uh, and listening to the Speared Sunnies podcast. This is probably very early if you're a Patreon supporter, and I'm going to keep it that way. So, uh, yep, support me on Patreon. We need to get out of this fucking hole. That's what we're doing this year. So, uh, early access to everything I do, patreon.com, get that shit, and uh, grab tickets to the Melbourne Comedy Festival. It is in two weeks, so fucking hurry up. Get your tickets now. All right, I'm Lewis Spears. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Have a shit one.